Hello, my name is Jonathan Coxall and I'd like to welcome you to the Macmillan Study Skills video lessons. There are five video lessons in this series and each video lesson has one of these, a PDF worksheet which you can download from the Mondadori website. The five video lessons are developing study skills, grammar study skills, vocabulary study skills, listening and speaking study skills and reading and writing study skills. Welcome to the fourth in the series of Macmillan Study Skills video lessons. Today we're going to be looking at listening and speaking study skills and how we can develop further our listening skills and our speaking skills. In this video we're going to divide the two sections up. Firstly we're going to look at listening and then we're going to look at speaking. In greater detail, first of all we're going to look at what you do before you listen, how important it is to keep calm when you're listening, and then look at activities you can do when listening outside the classroom. The second part, looking at speaking, we'll look at giving personal information, thinking about what to say, and then when you don't know a word, what you can do to improvise. So in this first slide which looks at listening, we're actually not talking about the skill of listening. What it's very, very important to do is certain things before you listen. Here, for example, we can see um, that the activities or what the question asks you to do is to listen to two people talking about where their friends go on Saturday morning. We can actually gain a lot of information about what the listening text is going to be by reading the questions. Always do that. It's always a good idea also to look at the pictures because they will also help us to predict the information that we're going to hear in the listening text. We've seen how pre-listening activities can help us to predict what's going to be in the text. Now let's have a look at what you can do to try and keep calm when you don't necessarily understand everything that's actually been said in a listening text. If you don't understand a section, don't worry, because it will prevent you from understanding what comes afterwards. Don't switch off if you miss a word or you don't understand a word. Carry on listening. An overall understanding is better than no understanding at all. The second point is remember, it isn't always necessary to understand every word. You can actually understand quite a lot from the words which surround the word which you don't fully understand. And finally, remember that often teachers and, and especially in exams, you'll get the chance to listen twice. The first listening is for an overall understanding. The second listening is to make sure that you can get a bit more detail and specific information. Okay, just remember that the amount of language that you listen to will also help you to improve more quickly. It's up to you and practice makes perfect. So there are a lot of things that you can actually listen to outside of the classroom which will help you to improve your language skills. We recommend that you listen to as many CDs or films in English. Um, whether it be YouTube or DVDs on, the, on your television with English, if you want with, with Italian or English subtitles, you will notice a marked difference just by spending maybe one month, 20 minutes every day listening to English. It's always a good idea to uh, try and listen to readers, books. Um, there are lots of graded readers uh, for sale in shops which also have CDs. Listen to them. They will improve your English no end especially if you're able to read at the same time as listening to the books themselves. And finally, uh, the internet offers a huge number of podcasts or radio broadcasts which are really interesting and worth listening to. So the more you actually listen and try and put yourself into a situation where you have to listen, the better your English will become. If you're thinking about taking the PET or the first certificate exam, it's always a good idea to practice talking about your interests and your hobbies. Let's have a look at some of the things you can do to make sure that when you do have to do this, you're prepared. When giving personal information, it's a good idea to actually practice talking about your interests. Think about what you want to say and develop various ideas on which things you can talk about easily. Secondly, speak loudly and clearly. There's nothing worse than actually not being able to understand what somebody's saying. Thirdly, say a lot of things. You're talking about yourself. What are your interests? Think about how to say that in English before you go into the exam. And finally, if you don't understand a question, ask the person to repeat it. It's very simple. I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? Or can you repeat the question, please? 
very easy and shows you have a command of the language. You may find yourself in a situation whereby you need to take time, you need to find time to think about what you're going to say. There are a variety of techniques which we can use, so let's have a look at those now. So, when we're thinking what to say, the first thing we can actually use are fillers. Um, expressions like, hmm, or yeah, perhaps, or good question. Then, if you don't have anything to say, you could perhaps use some language of speculation. Like, well, it could be, or, or it might be. Um, what about... Thirdly, if we're really stuck, we can use questions. Questions like we show, saw in the fourth slide, um, which is, sorry, could you repeat the question? Or, if we've understood the question, we could perhaps turn it around and ask our interlocutor a question. Finally, it's a good idea to try and use simple language, but don't forget to experiment with new words. In this last slide, we look at what to do when you don't know a word. The first thing I suggest is perhaps use a synonym or a similar word. Even if you don't know the exact word, you can often get round it by using an alternative. You could try and use a more basic or general word or expression. Or, if needs be, you could actually say, eh, it's the opposite of... Or finally, if you want to, you could try and explain the word with different words. These are all perfectly valid techniques, and if you're in an exam situation, they will be taken into consideration for your ability to use the language as a whole, even if you don't know the precise word you want to use. Hope you've enjoyed this fourth in the Macmillan Study Skills video lessons on listening and speaking study skills. Next time we'll be looking at reading and writing study skills, perhaps the hardest of all. Look forward to seeing you then.